My next guest, is, you know, actually, you know what? We're all so excited around here to have our next guest on the show. We want to do something a little different. Rob, play me a little something on the, on the keys. And Johnny G, can I get a mic out here? I'm going to do things a little differently this morning. <clears throat> Her name was led across the world From six seasons on Gossip Girl She's back here in New York again To the Broadway run of mice and men In country strong we heard her sing Her debut album's called Heartstrings Everybody welcome Three, four Leighton Meester, welcome to the show Robin, I thought singing for you would be apropos Hope my joy is properly expressed Because this morning show's got Leighton Meester as a guest Welcome Leighton Meester, everybody! Did my best, my best opera Broadway thing there. Whoa. Yeah, you know, try to bring it from the from the diaphragm for you. Oh my God, that was <laughs> great. Oh, thank you, that thank was, you. That was good. First, uh, first time we've ever rolled that out, so it's a, it's a it's a moment of honor. For oh, you. I, I was thinking you for. Think that highly of you. <laughs> I was thinking for one second, I was like, does he do this for everyone? No, 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 no. It was my first time. You're my first. Uh, huge year for you. Huge year. Four movies coming out. Your Broadway debut in Of Mice and Men. Uh, your first ever album about to drop. And most importantly, probably, you're a married woman now. So, I mean, what in the world can you possibly do in 2015 that can even come close to what you did in 2014? What a year. I know. It's, it's been good. I, I didn't exactly plan it this way. I just sort of, like, took work when I could get it, and now everything's coming. And, um, yeah, it's really exciting. It's, it's, it's good. It's fun. Did you at least get to get a honeymoon? I know with everything going on, did you at least get to take a, uh, even a quick honeymoon? Um, no, I... Oh. <laughs> See, that's what 2015's got to offer. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. There you go. We'll, we'll make up for the honeymoon. Uh, your debut album, I can remember in 1997, I'm dating myself, when, when my band's first album was about to come out and all the feelings. What are you feeling knowing that your first, you know, debut album's about to drop? Are you excited? Are you nervous? I mean, what's, what's going through your, uh, through your mind? I, I'm both. I'm, I'm more excited than anything. I have a lot of promo and shows lined up and um, just, I don't know, I guess... I'm just excited. I'm, it's been a long time, um, and you know I have a day job, so I've been like <laughs> working uh, a lot, and yeah. uh, finally had the chance to take a little bit of time off and and work on music and and actually take the time to put it out and and promote it. So um, I'm doing that, and that's that's very exciting. Well, congrats on that. Thanks. I know uh, music's very meaningful to you, and it's great to be able to do that and share with everybody. Uh, the title track called Heartstrings is is kind of got a like an old soulful like Joni Mitchell kind of Tori Amos kind of kind of feel. Um, is that a style that you've you've been doing for a long time in your writing and in your singing? Or is that something you've kind of recently moved moved into? Um, I guess recently, as far as you know, people who uh, haven't heard this music, but I've been making everyone I know close to me listen to it for a few <laughs> years. Um, but yeah, a, a couple years ago, I did a small tour with some of the same songs that ended up on this record, um, but I hadn't recorded anything. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like, I wrote these songs, I want people to hear it, and I don't have time because I was working full-time on a TV show and doing movies and, and trying to get work. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, I've... I, Years ago, I, you know, went a totally different route, um, and then I, I did a big old turnaround and, and started just kind of trusting my own instincts and writing my own music, and, um, and I, I think it's better. It's very cool. And you also started your own label called Hotly Wanting. You have to... 
You have to explain the name Hotly Wanting to me. Is there, is there some special story behind That's that? That's the worst part is because I'm like, man, I have to explain this every time. Because <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny. Um, no, it's a great name. It's just there's got to be a story behind it. Yeah, it's funny. I'm like, I, I have my own label. I'm the only person on my label. <laughs> um, <laughs> my biggest supporter. Uh yeah, it, it, I just was thinking, like, that, you know, as far as music goes, it was basically just the name of my corporation, like, paying for music stuff. Um, and I, I just thought, what is something that means deep, burning, great desire? And said hotly, hotly wanting. Hotly wanting, there it there is. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I have a new movie coming out called Life Partners, which you uh, happen to be in with your, with your now husband. How was that experience working together? I know you play the best friend of his fiance, his girlfriend in the movie, is that right? Yes. Well, yeah. Um, it's it's a uh, it's uh, just adorable. <laughs> just I love <laughs> I love that movie. It's it's really I'm so proud of it. It was like the most fun I've ever had shooting, and um, we shot in L.A. It's about my character and my best friend. We happen to be straight and gay, um, respectively. Um, Not at the same time. But it, no. Okay. I was looking, all right, you never I get know. It <laughs> but um, but then she meets Adam's character, and they, you know, start planning a future and being adults. And yeah. I'm like, but I don't want to do that. Um, and so it's just about the dynamic of a friendship and how it changes when someone meets somebody. And um, but it was super fun. We got to. I mean, I got to be just totally a big old geek. I, all of us did. And. Yeah. Um, you know, do a lot of improv, and, and it was just really fun. Very cool. We'll definitely have to check that out. We have to take a uh, quick break here. We got much more with Layton coming up. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Now, I, sh I should say welcome back to New York, as you were just in New York earlier this year, uh, your Broadway debut, as I mentioned earlier, of Mice and Men, yeah. Chris O'Dowd and James Franco. I've always kind of been curious about doing Broadway and, and kind of, you know, toyed with the idea of it. Was it everything you expected it to be? Uh, did it meet expectations? Yeah, I, I really didn't have a lot of expectations. I kind of just walked into it saying, I, I know nothing, just to yeah. teach me and I, you know, I'm here to learn and I learned a lot. I learned everything, and um, I think I would say it surpassed my expectations as far as like just being present and so much fun, especially for something that's not really a light piece to be working yeah. on. You know, it, it was definitely the most fun um, I've had. It's just, it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, I have to imagine a play about, you know, Great Depression era migrant workers is about as far <laughs> as you can get from Gossip Girl at this point. I mean, it's, it's like polar opposites. But it's interesting because you get the, the live element when you do Broadway, the immediate satisfaction of the crowd, which I'm sure you're enjoying now, you know, as a music artist as well. It's that immediate gratification. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think one is helping the other, and I think that was what kind of helped me get that job in the first place. They were like, you do music, right? You've, you've played live? And I'm like, yeah. Um, it is totally different, but it's, it's still so cool. Like, you know, you kind of work it out. And th the thing that's hard to kind of grasp is that when you go out there, they say, you know, don't hold on to what you did the night before. Because if mm -hmm. that got a laugh or if that got a good reaction, like, it's not the same audience. Never so know. you yeah. don't know. So, um, it, yeah. Is that the trickiest thing you think about about live performing on Broadway? Is this every night is different? You have to kind of roll with, with the punches each and every night? Yeah, I mean, you can't expect the person that you're with to be doing the same thing, so you can't do the same thing. Um, but, yeah, I, I, it's, it's very cool. I think I've never been, as far as, like, life or work, been present in that way. Yeah. I know it sounds silly and like a lot of people say that, but it's true and I've always heard people, you know, talking about you have to do theater. It's um, you know, it's just a totally different thing. No, I think it is. It is. You're absolutely right. It's great. And I know you just performed uh, in New York City as well at the Apple Store. Uh, and I, which actually I've done myself with, with 90 Degrees. I mean, were people pulling out the iPhone flashlights and, and rocking them in the air? I mean, was it, was it a no, good crowd? No, they didn't do that. Oh, that's Man. so disappointing. What an opportunity. Ah, oh, come on. But, yeah, it was funny. It's like people, like, the, the, the front of you is just, like, people that are there to see you. And then behind, it's like, 
people at Genius Bar like working on their <laughs> stuff. But yeah, that was really cool. It was it was super fun, and we had a, a, a great Q and A with an audience. And um, yeah, it's just ex exciting. It was my yeah. first time that I've played since I put out the song. Well, speaking of shows, I know you have a, a sold out show at the Troubadour, legendary venue in Los Angeles. Uh, the night of your of your album release, that's gotta be that's gotta be pretty cool. Are you excited about that? I'm very excited. Um, I have my full band all ready to go. That um, you know, a lot of them worked on the record, and uh, we really played the record when we recorded it just in a live room, which was a, a really cool way of doing it. Um, and yeah, it's just a celebration. It's yeah. you know, it's it's obviously you know, there's there's tickets like people bought, but. I think it's just, it's like friends and family, and it's just going to be lovely. That's awesome. I Congratulations think, on everything. No, <laughs> <Thanks>. absolutely. <laughs> be fantastic. Uh, I know you think that I hit you with the hard-hitting questions, but in fact, these are, these are the pushover questions. The real <laughs> questions happen outside. Are you ready for a little Times Square and Censored? Yeah. Come on. Watch your step. So Ellen Lee is down at Times Square with some of your adoring fans, and they have some uh, some of the hard-hitting questions for you. Ellie, how we doing? Hi guys. So our first comes our first question comes from Georgette. Hi, I adored Gossip Girl. What was the weirdest or dumbest gossip you've ever heard about yourself or a co-star? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> I I I don't really know. I guess. The only thing that I've ever really heard that was recurring for a while was that my middle name was Claire. It's not. Don't know. I, Fools. Yeah. I, I don't know who or what, where that came from, but it's funny. <laughs> That's salacious enough for you. Okay, right. here's our next question next from Jamie. Question. Hi, Layton. What was the last dream that you had? Last dream? Oh, wow. Man, I have like long, complicated, disjointed, weird dreams, and I always like wake up and write them down. Um, See, that's what I need to do. I always forget the dreams. You're smart enough to write them down. Yeah, I think one of the last ones, I don't know why or how, but I dreamed that I was on a boat and there was a bunch of animals on it and a bunch of like electronic equipment and mixed in with like grass and vines. And um, there was a monkey, and there was some kind of like elephant, half elephant. Le was your name Noah? Was no, no, but um, <laughs> but the uh, but the elephant's name was Yellow. Huh? That's oh. All right, That's we got time for one more quick one. All right, here's the last one. Hi, Layton. What was the last song played on your iPod or iPhone? I like uh, this song by Kurt Vile called Never Run Away. That's probably, I play that like a hundred times a day. All right, great questions, guys. Thank you so much. Be sure to catch your movie Life Partners and Heroes this December. And she's thinking about to perform a song a little later in the show of her new album, Hardships, which comes out October 28th. We got more buzz coming up after this. Stick around, everybody.